Here's an interesting way to do your shoulder seams. I am putting my tool behind the cast on because this is a top down design. If it was knitted from the bottom up, you could still do it and put it behind the bind off. Make sure you get all the strands involved. This was an E wrap, so there are two strands of yarn in that E. And each cast on stitch is hung on a needle. But note that we're hanging with the knit side looking at us. This is, let's see, this is the back of my sweater. So once I've done that, make sure you get every stitch, don't miss any. Then I will hang the front edge in the same manner, except that I'll be looking at the purl side of it. And that way, the two right sides of the fabric will be facing one another. Okay, I've got my front aligned, so we're doing the same thing. Find every cast on stitch. This was also knitted top down. Did you see me nearly miss the second loop? If I had done so, you can see it would leave that loop on the outside of the sweater, which, while not the end of the world, is not as tidy a look. So if you rotate your tool up before, towards yourself, basically, before hanging, you can make sure that the correct number of strands of yarn are indeed on it. We do this all the way across. Make sure that there's a stitch for every stitch, of course. What I mean is we know that we had the same number of stitches on the front and the back, so they should match up. They did match up fine. So I push both layers of fabric behind the needle latches. Now use a piece of main yarn, not a loop in it to put on your tool. Now you behave as though you were binding off around the gate pegs. Pull through both layers so that your tool goes through make a stitch. Sometimes you have to manually close the, the latch because the, sometimes the existing stitches aren't enough to do it. Hook to hook, pull back, grab the yarn, pull forward. I just lifted the latch, laid the hooks together, pull back, grab the yarn, pull forward. When not trying to demonstrate, and once you have some experience, you'll find this goes pretty fast. Moving my hand from out, out from between the tripod legs. I'm trying to keep my left arm down so that it doesn't get in your light. I hope you, I'm succeeding somewhat. Did you see what just happened? That latch tried to get into the yarn. We don't want that. That's why you sometimes have to manually start it closing. Because we don't want it getting hung up in that yarn. When we get to the end, we'll just snip the yarn, pull it through the last stitch, and knot it or fasten it off however you think is most appropriate. There's my last stitch. I'm going to yarn over again, start to pull through, snip, pull all the way through, and now the gate pegs have been graciously holding this for us. We can lift it off. Let's look at the other side. Here's the same piece of film you have just seen, but I've slowed it way down and zoomed way in so you can watch a few stitches being done in slow-mo. 
and I'll talk you through it. It starts by placing the tool hook in the machine needle hook. Match them up. With your left hand, pull back the needle butt. Pull it through all the layers of the fabric. Release the hooks from one another. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over just means grab a loop of yarn. It's a crocheting term and sometimes a hand knitting term, and it applies here. Hook to hook, whoops. Pull through all the fabric layers, yarn over, pull through. And each time we're wrapping the fresh yarn for the stitch around the gate peg, which evenly spaces it. There's what the seam looks like. Nice, tidy, a little bit flexible, but not sloppy, and evenly spaced. And here's the sweater that I was working on completed.